Okay. Okay. Sorry. So I will give you another reminder is that this talk is the last talk from the MSE group at ETH. So please pay enough attention if you are really interested in the work in our group. And today, first, what is the division of labor? In, the, in human society, if we want to produce the products, for example, a car, we actually have two strategies. First is that we can train a superman who can do every task, every, every step during this task. But that, that means the superman will be super busy, so he will be very tired. Alternatively, we can have another strategy which is more common, is that we call division of labor. We can divide this long task into several steps and training several workers, and each worker is only responsible for one step. So they, have, they can have lower burden of the work, so the system will be more efficient. Actually, this thing is also very common in microbial communities. If the microbes want to transform a substrate, to a final product through a long pathway, they can also have one super bug to produce all of the enzymes involved in this pathway. Alternatively, they can also very smart to do division of labor and within your microbial communities and each bug only produce one enzyme, so responsible for only one step. That we call metabolic division of labor. Actually, these things is very common in nature. A very classical example is the nitrification. So this is a division of labor between ammonium oxidizer and nitric oxidizer. And actually, this is a nature case. And in human society, we're in the industry case, we also want to engineer in such a system to do uh, more to, for example, produce a more valuable product for our use. And actually, what I'm interested in is the degradation of those organic comp compounds or the pollutants, for example, plastic or bio waste. So if we want to degradate these things, we can also engineering a division of labor community to do this. So we can have a long pathway and we just uh, divide this pathway into several steps and have uh, several bugs to do this degradation. This is what I'm interested in. So actually, we have such system. We want to build this system. So the first question is actually, if we put several bugs into one community, if they are very happy to live together, that means if the community is really stable. And second question is that if the community is stable, if we can predict the structure of the community. So to achieve this, I have engineering a microbial consortia. So it's a very uh, simple system. So I use Nofteling degradation pathway as a model. And then we have, uh, what, actually we, at the beginning, we have a super bug can do the whole thing. But then I lock out the genes and then build a system like the first guy can only do the first step. And then the second guy can, can do the next uh, up, downstream step. So this is a two-step division of labor. And then I can also make this system more complicated that I can just divide this pathway into many steps. Here is the fourth step. So I have a system for four step metabolic division labor. So next step is to see if this box really happy to work together. That is uh, to directly to see if they are, the community is really stable. So, but the story is very sad. They are not happy actually. In fact, there are one guy very happy and another guy is really sad. The truth is that if we, do, if we capture the dynamics, we can see that the second guy grow much faster than the first guy. And then if we do a dilution and we want to regrow them, we will find they cannot grow again. So in a case is also found in the four step, in the four step MDL community, is that the guy performs the last step can grow much faster than the other guys. So the community is actually unstable. So what happened? Why this is uh, make sense? So we can go to see this uh, degradation pathway of the complex, complicated organic carbons. We can see, find one interesting future is that always the things at the end of the pathway is a tasty food for the bacteria. But the things here, well, it's very complicated, it's very weird that bacteria cannot directly eat as a carbon source. So if we do division of labor here, we will, we will expect that 
the stream perform the final steps, final several steps, they will get more tasty food. But the guy performed the initial steps will be very sad. So this is just like in human society. Actually, the guy performed the last step. He can steal the car. And then he will not share the money to all of the former guys. So this is a very unstable and unbalanced system. So we can call it embedder because it embeds something. And then the, the problem is like if we should arrest him. No, we should not because it's also perform very important function here. And then the way to deal with this is that we need, we need a law that we could use the law to limit the, the final guys. So we will have a stable system. So what is this law? To figure out it, I go to the mathematic model. First, I will go to a very simple scenario that is a two-step division of labor. That is, uh, we have a substrate and can be transformed to, by the first string to the uh, intermediate, and then be trans further transformed by the second bulk to the final product. So the model is actually simple. Yeah, actually, it's, uh, here we have two modules. The first module uh, uh, describes the reactions here, the two reactions here and then also describe the transport of the, of the three substrate, intermediate and the final product uh, across the cell. So we have such uh, important parameters here. And then we have second modules that we describe the growth of the population. Here we will have a very strong hypothesis based on our observations because the final product is the only limiting resource of the system. So the growth of the, the growth of the two box is basically limited by the final product. And then with this model, we can try to figure out if this community can really reach steady, stable state, I mean steady state, if they can really stable. So to do that, it's very simple. We just solve the steady state equations. By solving such equations, we will have a very simple and beautiful formula that can define the assembly and the stability stable of the community. And this uh, formula is actually defined such things. It's like here is the relative abundance of the second box that is the embedder. And actually its relative abundance is determined by two important parameters. First there is a private benefit. What is it, this is means the second box can reach the final product more earlier. So this is what they got the private benefit. And then M means the first guy, that means the string performed the first step should grow faster than the second step string. So that means the growth advantage. So this formula can give us two informations that if we need a community stable, we need, we need two important conditions. First is that we need the first string hold a higher growth rate or a growth advantage than the second string. And the second condition is that such growth advantage should be higher than the private benefit of the second string. Actually, maybe this is not easy to understand, especially for biologists. So I will give this uh, face gram to make you more easy to understand. So this is very simple face gram. So we can see that the community can only be stable when when M is over N, here we can see the several representative simulations. We can see we can obtain a very beautiful stable dynamics. But here, if we go outside of this region, we can see here happens this embedder derma. That means the embedder will dominate the community and the community will collapse. And we can, another thing we can use this formula is that we can use it to predict the structure of the community at the stable state. Here is shown as the color, and it's more yellow means there is more embedder. So I think some of the biologists will argue me that the, simple, the system is very simple. Here are many, you have many strong hypotheses, and then there are many things you did not consider. So use mathematical model, we can do such impossible things. Is that we can just uh, relax several, several hypotheses to include more complex me mechanisms. For example, in the degradation of organic carbons, there are many pollutants that is toxic to the bacteria. So if we consider that the organic carbons, the substrate, the initial substrate is toxic, 
we can actually modify a little bit of our, our rule. And then we can actually very cool to use our face gram to actually achieve, to see if the, if the stability stable become more, more easy to reach or if the stability is that it becomes a, need a very more strict condition. So we can see based, based on here, if we have substrate toxicity, that means the community will be more easy to reach the stable. And another hypothesis is that we assumed here that the final product is the only limiting resource to suppose the growth. But actually, in some cases, for the first reaction, the bacteria can also get some carbon source from the first reaction that we call, here's the byproduct generate from the first step. If we consider in this constitutions, we can actually see, yes, the community will becomes more easy to reach stable. And, uh, and then such process, we can quantify it, use two important parameters. First is the reaction rate of the first step. And then is the relative production of the byproduct compared to the final product. So we have then, that means we have the law. Then we should use the law to control the community to build a stable system. So we can first to do is that our synthetic community actually have some specific mechanisms. For example, the, the naphthalene is toxic and also the intermediate is also toxic. So we can add such mechanisms to our basic model and then we can do a simulations to find the, a very uh, specific phase gram specific to our synthetic system. And then I know in our, I measured the several parameters and I find the, the provide benefit N, the value is 2.53. And then the, the initial point is here. So based on our prediction, that means because the, the two strings actually have the very similar growth rate because they are actually drove from the same ancestral string. And so based on our prediction, the, com the initial community is actually not stable. So what we need to do is to increase the value of the M so we can find, we can move our, our community to the some point here so it can be, can achieve a stable. So the goal now is to increase the value of the M. How to do this is that if we go to see the definition of the M, we could find one important parameter is the death rate of the second string. So that means we can modify the death rate of the second string to achieve this, uh, to achieve this design. To do that, I introduced a, a module, a genetic module to the second string. In this module, the expression of the toxic protein we call CCDB or X174 can be, can be inducible, controlled by a promoter. Here is the ramonized. So we can, so based on this system, we can use different concentration of ramonized to control the death rate of the second string. That means, and then we can do a quantitative fitting to find, to find, to make a prediction. That means we can get the death rate of the second string, and then we can use these parameters for the prediction. So actually the, the results is very exciting. That is, if we increase the value of M, we can actually reach several stable, stable dynamics. So this is experimentally, which is matched well on the simulations. And then this, uh, we can also use those parameters to predict the final frequency final frequency of the embedder and the fitting is very good. With those two step units, two, with the understanding of the two step M MDR system, we can, ex we can try to expand this knowledge to understand more complicated the MDR system. That is the, the system can be division of labor to within multiple, multiple steps. So to do that, I also start with the mathematic model which will be more complicated, but the basic parameters is similar as the two-step system. And with this mathematic model, I can draw another more general, general formula to describe the assembly of the system. This formula is actually controlled by these this two parameters, that is NK dividing MK. So here for more, more string system, uh, multiple string system, 
NK here actually means the private benefit of embedder compared to the case population. I mean the initial, because we will have more population here. So we'll call, for example, this population the case population. And then we will have the second term is that the relative growth rate of the case population, because every population performed the former step should be grow faster than the embedder. So using this two term, we can actually predict the community assembly of the n step, n step MDR community. So we can use then use this more general law, general law to see if we can build a more complicated multi-step MDLL community. So the result is also very good. Based on our prediction, we should have a very suitable NK dividing MK value to make our community stable. So the result is like that. That means uh, the only in those very suitable NK dividing MK value, the community can be stable. Otherwise, they, are, they actually will collapse after three passages. And then the prediction of the structure is also very good. Here we can use this formula to predict the relative abundance of the embedder. And you can see here the green one is the prediction from purely simulations, and the red one is the directly prediction from this formula. You can see also a very good fitting between the predicting the frequency of the measured experimental measured frequency. So with that, actually, my goal actually achieved a little bit is that I can answer these two questions with two very simple formula. That means that if we want to achieve the stability, stable of, uh, stability of the MDR system, we need to follow those two simple formula. And then we can even use another simple formula to predict a structure. Here we can predict the relative abundance of the embedder. So with that, I will first want to thank my, my lab in the Peking University. And then special thanks to these guys. We perform experiment to view division of labor and then make me be an embedder to achieve the benefits. And then we also, I also want to thank my group here with division of labor well, I can be another embedder here. Finally, as the Young's editor, I want to advertise a journal called IMAT that is always, if you have good meta genomics data, you can consider this journal. Thanks for your attention. What is the parameter H in that formula? I just, I, I was wondering what that was in this. Uh, you mean this one, H? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this formula is not derived from the solved of the equations. It's actually from many simulation results. We do a fitting. And then this H is actually, that's actually variable. It's depending on, mostly it depends on the, how many steps you have. That means actually in our results is like, the edge value is like such fitting. That means if you have less depth, the edge value is smaller, but it will reach a stable value if you increase the step. Go online.